Hi everyone, I'm Melissa with Midnight Hour Oil. I hope everybody had a really uh, enjoyable Christmas and New Year's. Um, kind of trying to get back into the normal swing of things. My husband's back at work today, and so I thought I would try to come out and share some things that I've been receiving um, over the past few weeks. And I think it will encourage you. I um, I feel like, you know, we, we still need to be watching. We still need to be waiting for the Lord to return. We know we are in the season. We are very close. And uh, the Lord has just continued to give me uh, confirmation that, that we are to be watching. Okay, so uh, this was probably around like the 24th of December. I had this dream. And in the dream, I was talking to a few women. All right, and I, I was telling them that my husband, Alan, was talking in his sleep. And what he said was that he was going to consult with Adam, okay, uh, about what to wear during the millennial reign. And he said he would be wearing righteousness and faithfulness, okay. And I thought that was pretty neat how the Lord was just kind of directing us to what's coming in the millennial reign, a time of righteousness, a time of faithfulness. Um, and I also, through that night, I, the Lord woke me up numerous times to pray, to intercede for different people. I don't even remember who, all right? I just, I was led to just intercede. I just, I feel like, you know, the Lord is doing that, not just with me, but with a lot of other people, just um, bringing up the unsaved, the lost for us to pray for, to intercede for. Okay, so um, the next thing was another dream I had. This was on December 26th, and this was Amir Safari was in this classroom, and he uh, was basically saying um, that we needed to, just like the song, continue to fight on the way. All right, so he was just kind of like encouraging everybody to keep fighting, keep pressing on, and then all of a sudden in the dream it was just dead silence, and I knew the rapture was about to take place. Okay, so that was December 26th. Uh, and then on December 30th, I had a dream uh, about, okay, I saw this eagle, like this big bird of prey, and it had gotten a hold of a white owl, and it was flying away with it. And as I was watching, it's like I, I got this message in my spirit, um, this must come first. This must come first. And I thought, hmm, what does the first before what? So uh, I shared this with my friend uh, Rhonda Empson to get her take on what some of these things mean. I knew the owl was symbolic of like uh, evil, witchcraft, the occult. And of course, an eagle we know is symbolic of victory, the prophetic. So Rhonda did some research and she was telling me that she found where an owl is symbolic also of abomination and desolation. And we know that Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. So we know uh, that that eagle in the dream likely was symbolic of Jesus carrying away um, the abomination that causes desolation, the Antichrist, taking it out. So before we can enter into the millennial reign, Jesus is going to deal with that evil and, and carry it off, which that's just an exciting thing. I just feel like these dreams the Lord's giving us are just actually pointing us now to the next age that's coming. Uh, so I just hope you're not losing momentum. But I also just, I'm not going to share the details of this dream. Um, it was in in the dream you know Jesus came to me and and I'll I'll just share um the overall message that I that I got from this dream because it was just a really special dream and but I wanted to share the message because I feel like it's applicable to to the whole body of Christ uh but what the overall message from this dream where Jesus came to me was okay he is looking forward to spending time with us. You know, when we go in the rapture, when the church is taken off the earth, okay, uh, it's, it's like a parallel to a Jewish wedding. Okay, so before the celebration takes place, there are seven days in a, in a Jewish wedding where the, the bride and groom are together, or at that time of consummation. 
And so that's what we have to look forward to next is that seven years of just us and Jesus. And it's, it's such um, an exciting thing to think about, you know, that time we get to spend getting to know him um, face to face. And uh, I just wanted you to know that he's, he's anticipating that too. He's, he's looking forward to that. So um, anyway, that was, that was a really special dream that he gave me. Now, the last thing I wanted to share is uh, some, uh, a sweet girl had emailed me a question and I wanted to share what I shared with her because I think maybe others have questions like this too. And, and I think it's important for us to think about this, but she was asking from, based on a scripture she read, um, you know, why, why do people want the tribulation to come? Why do they want this, the rapture, which is going to lead to the tribulation to happen? Why are people excited about it? Cause you know, it's going to mean a, a lot of death and darkness and, and horrible things on the earth. And so I, as I wrote back to this sweet girl, I, I thought of various scenarios as to why people, uh, you know, are looking for the rapture. Um, and you know, there's different reasons. And I think, you know, these are just my thoughts, but there are some people who are steeped in legalism, you know, and they just want to see people pay for their sins. You know, these are our modern day Pharisees call themselves Christians and they just can't wait to see the boom come down and people pay for their sins. They haven't yet come into that revelation of the gospel of grace. They're not resting in the love of the Lord. So they are really focused on judgment. Okay, so it's, it's a sad place for anybody to be in that place. But I think that's one of the scenarios that we're looking at. Um, second, I think a lot of people are just, you know, in, in a tough place. You know, their circumstances could be that they're sick, maybe in chronic pain, uh, just different, you know, maybe bad relationships, uh, financial issues. And so, you know, maybe the rapture is just something that they might be looking to as an escape just from the pain of life and suffering. Uh, others are just probably tired of sin. I think, you know, we look around, where you, the news is just filled with horrible things going on around the globe and, and I can't imagine anybody who can look at that and, and not want Jesus to come back. Um, and then some people, I think some people are just really excited to see Jesus face to face. But as we, whatever the scenario is, it's important for us to not neglect uh, the, and remember the lost and remember the people that, you know, are going to be here um, during the worst time on the face of the earth. And, and right now, to just strike that balance, okay? Yes, we're commanded to wait. We're commanded to watch Matthew 24, you know, 42 through 43. Jesus commands us to watch. But I believe we need to also be praying and interceding for the lost, the people that maybe are in that valley of decision, um, and just ask, you know, for their salvation before, before that time of judgment. Um, as, that as many as possible will come into the ark. Okay, I think that's the balance uh, that, that we all need and that the Lord will be pleased with. Okay, so again, it is always my prayer that we will all continue to keep our lamps burning bright while we wait for Jesus. I love you all. God bless you.